Hello, agents, trainers, keepers, pilots, hunters, retired ballers, eighth wallers, and our beloved explorers and wayfinders. Welcome to episode 88 of the Way Spotters podcast, a podcast dedicated to making you a better wayfinder. Way Spotters is brought to you by the good people at the Pokemon Professor Network. Today is Friday, September 22nd, 2023. Uh, I'm Chris. It's been a week. Wayfair has had themselves a week. With me, as always, is Jamal. How's it going, buddy? It's going great, man. I'm excited for this. And you're right. Wayfair has had its time in the spotlight, whether one wanted, wanted to have the time <laughs> spotlight or not. It's been the yeah. sweet summer child of X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it this week. Yeah, I don't think Wayfair has gotten this much attention since it launched that's very way sad. back in as Wayfarer in 2019. I don't think that there's right. been so many eyes on this. So, which is good and bad. And yeah. we will talk about all of that. First, let's hear from friend of the show, Testone, because we have some news. All right, let's hear it. And now, the latest Niantic news from the Wayspotters podcast presented by the Pokemon Professor Network. All right. I don't know if you caught it in the opening, but today is NBA All World Sunset Day. So uh, rest in peace, NBA All World. Rip. Rip NBA. It is gone. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, I just never got into that game. No, me either. I, me I just either. couldn't try. I tried. I tried. I just couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, me either uh edits stopped getting pushed into review so if you've noticed that you haven't gotten any edits in your reviews lately nanta karen is looking at it um i don't know how much looking into it got done this week <laughs> um but <laughs> it is something that they are aware is a problem and they are looking into it uh i got level 10 in ingress so, Yay! Uh, something else happened. So what was it? What was? It? Oh, oh yes, they announced oh. the Wayfarer challenge is coming. Yes. So we've been rewarded with our patience. We had no Chris. I, I want the listeners and the viewers to realize how uncanny accurate your internal clock is. Yes, we talked about day. this a couple episodes ago, and you were like, "It's been 94 <laughs> days. We should be hearing something." And I'm like thinking, "Ah, oh, you know, whatever. It's just a coincidence." And lo and behold, you were. I mean, it's going to launch almost exact day you predicted that it would launch. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to need Nailed some it. lottery numbers this week. I'm going to need some yeah, lottery no numbers, kidding. sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket this week. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to cover it real quick. Uh, I don't yeah. want to spend too, too much time on this because we have a jam-packed show. There are two options, all aboard. So that's Italy, France, and Germany. Mm -hmm. Or II Captain, that's South Korea, Taiwan, and the Philippines. There will be one week for each country. They don't want to kind of overdo it. So I picked all aboard because I really want to go through Italy, France, and Germany. Have you made your pick yet? Yes. So I picked Captain. I love Ooh. the the I, I I do I really love looking at things in in that part of the country the Southeast Asian part of the uh, of the world, um, uh, so South Korea Taiwan and the Philippines really hoping that we win so you know you're going all aboard I'm going I captain and let's go let's go yes let's we'll have go. to figure out who wins so voting yeah. ends Monday so if you're listening to this on Sunday and you haven't gone to vote we will put the link to the votes in the show notes or yes. in the description if you're on youtube go check it out go vote and then yep. we will cover whatever countries win in depth closer to when the wayfair challenge is going to drop so look so to i'm i'm sensing that you might have to start brushing up on a foreign language maybe we'll see oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I have picked a foreign language waste spot of the week, but I am not going to read the entire thing because the description is super long, but okay. I did it to myself this week. So make sure you stick around for that. Yeah. And, and I might be conspiring with Kroner for something coming might, down might the be. road. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> Kroner, if you're listening, we got a plan. That's like show <laughs> 93, 94, 95. We got some plan for you, Chris. All right. You ready to get into uh, it, man? I know... From the notes, you are locked and loaded. We've got a jam pack. Let's go, Chris. Let's go to topic number one. Okay. So I had a plan for this week. 
I had I had a whole plan out for this episode. Um, we were going to talk about supporting information, why it's important, how to use it, how not to use it, when it's important. Is it always important? Um, that's going to have to wait because Twitter went nuclear this week. <laughs> and we mentioned it on our breaking news segment last week, but we're going to dive into it heavy this week. And when I'm talking about Wayfair's new abuse enforcement ladder. So I'm going to rant here for a second. Um, from the post, it says, at Niantic, we strive to create an equitable, accurate, and unbiased map for all players and explorers. Niantic Wayfair is a platform that allows our explorers, explorers community to update the Niantic map, and we are committed to supporting them in doing so in a fair and unbiased manner. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to enjoy the benefits of location-based and augmented reality gaming. So, at the end of the day, this is Niantic's map. They have asked us to curate locations on the map for them. Think of it this way. If you're a freelancer, right, and you're hired by a client, and that client is, in this case, Niantic, but if you're hired by a cli client to source pieces of art for their collection, right, and they say to you, these are the three types of arts that I want. I want places that are good places to explore. I want art pieces that show good places to exercise and good places to be social, right? If you show up to your client with a painting of a dog poop station, or a sculpture of an outhouse, or 987 crocheted lamp posts. Do you think your client's going to be happy with you? No. No. You're going to get fired. You're going to show up with all this stuff, and that guy's going to go, you're fired. This is terrible. Correct. You're terrible, right? So Wayfarers are tasked with populating the lightship map within the rules that Niantic has laid out. And they are tired of people coming and saying, I don't care about your rules. I want this in my game. So I'm going to nominate 987 light posts, put them all in a nice little straight line, and have my fun in my game. Your rules be damned. Right? And frankly, Niantic's tired of it. So that's, you know, that's my rant. Um, what do you think? I love your rant. I, I absolutely <laughs> love your rant. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, Chris, that you said there from Twitter X going nuclear this weekend, everything you said there is 100% correct. But if we bring the other side to the argument, we wouldn't be authentic and genuine. The one thing that I've seen through all of the stuff on Twitter is the public the explorers, the trainers don't feel that Niantic has done a great job of explaining what those rules and guidelines are. And I think the people who aren't on the uh, WDD or aren't on the forums, those people have a pretty good idea of what the rules are. But people who are like, you know, PVPers or they're, you know, AR photographers who, who come into the space don't really have a good idea and they end up spreading on information and kind of coming into the china shop and knocking stuff over and i think that's kind of what happened so yeah in your rant what do you have to say about how we can help niantic get better at clarifying the rules and the guidelines so people understand they shouldn't bring a whole bunch of dog poop stations when we're looking for places to explore it's a fair point it's a very fair point right it's We've said, I think on this show several times, right? And people will say it on, on Twitter and, and on, even on the forums, right? Like Niantic needs to do a better job of doing criteria clarification, right? And it was one of the things that we, when we covered the AMA, that we were just like, this is one of the things that we really kind of hoped Niantic was going to do, and they didn't, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think what one of the things that needs to happen is like rejection emails, I think need to be better, right? They mm -hmm. need to, the rejection reasons need to be better because we need to be get, because a more the majority of people aren't trying to abuse the system, right? They just right. don't know. And sometimes people get caught up. Like some people in, in the Netherlands probably got caught up seeing 
987 light posts show up and go, yes. oh, well, they must be eligible. So they went out yes. and did it, and then they probably got caught up in, in some of the bands, right? So Now, I, I don't want to I, – I know we're coming up to the meat of what you wanted to talk about. I wanted to bring that up. But what I also wanted to say on that real quick is, to Niantic's credit, to my point I just made, less than 24 hours after they put this out, or maybe it was a little bit longer than 24 hours, they came out with the clarification. Yes. And sometimes when you first come out with the message, you run it against all the people who you think and say, hey, I, I've done it before. Hey, how does this sound? How does this sound? How mm -hmm. does this sound? Everybody's like, that sounds great. And then I read it to an outsider and they're like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> and I think that's what happened. Yep. All of us read it and go, okay, if I'm not trying to cheat, I'm not going to get 3 1,560 days. If I'm not trying to get into the back end of the server, I'm not going to get step three on the ladder. If I'm not conspiring with people all around the world to do this, I'm not going to get in trouble. We all yep. understood that, but I don't think the regular public who's not a time explorer or wayfinder understood that. All right. So I don't want to get into the meat of the conversation. You've got it methodically laid out. But what I wanted to bring up on my previous point was Niantic put out a post, realized that it wasn't as clear as it could have been, and Niantic aired and came back and did a clarification that I thought, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, I'm Niantic, I need you to give us better communication. and But on the second hand, I'm like, you did it. You realized that it wasn't as clear, and you came back and did it. So for everybody out there wanting to know what it is, Chris, like I said, has got it methodically laid out. We're going to go through everything kind of in a chronological order. So back over to you. No, I, you're 100% right. And I think that's one thing that um, kind of the general public needs to be able to separate is because there's especially Pokemon Go players, right? And Ingress players to a lesser extent. Um, maybe you can correct me on that. But I hear it from English, but like the, the game teams aren't necessarily great at communicating. They're great at communicating like the first time sometimes, but then yeah. that's it. You get radio silence. Whereas the Wayfair right. team has been very, very good at gauging the reaction of the public and reacting to it and saying, okay, Correct. you're right. That wasn't necessarily the best communication from us. Here's some clarification. We hear you. Here's because they've had two, like Tintino came out with another one too, right? So there's two that were, yeah. I mean, like, literally, for those watching this, like 30 minutes before we hit record, yeah. Tintino came out with something, and it's like, thankfully, we didn't record when we usually do, or we would have <laughs> missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right, so, I'm gonna jump into this. You want me to put this up on the screen? You ready? Yes, so all right, there's method to my madness. We are going right. to go, let's go. This is an article I wrote for GoHub um, that kind of covers everything we're going to talk about today. So we're kind of going to use this as a, as a guideline. I'll post the, um, the article link in the show notes for anybody who wants to go read it. Uh, yep. First, I wanted to start off with what Niantic considers violations, right? Because this was, I think, the biggest sticking point for, and I hate to use the word casuals, but I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> casual wayfinders yeah. right yep. people who play pogo and aren't necessarily like they're not on the forums and they're not in a discord and it's just kind of like they play pogo and they nominate stuff that they happen across right in hopes to get it in the game right because mm -hmm. um, that was where all the fear come, most of the fear came from Niantic defines abuse as any behavior that violates their terms of service and the player guidelines and pretty, that's pretty straightforward right Mm -hmm. Some examples of things that they call consider violations are submitting fake data to the Niantic map. So that's fake way spots, right? Fake photos, third-party photos, um, trying to get a way spot of like a park playground in your backyard and saying that right. your backyard isn't actually a park or trying to get historical plaques that you're saying are in this area, but they're not actually there, right? A yeah. Another example and is on a trail, taking a picture of yes. one trail marker and replicating it every 20 meters, every 30 mm -hmm. meters, and using that same trail marker that's legitimate and it's in one spot, but like placing it in another spot. So that's another yeah. example. 
or or the gazebo bandit remember the gazebo bandit the guy who yes, took do. three or four pictures of the same gazebo and then nominated mm-hmm. them in 20 spots in that one town yes. that i found right? yes it was and it was to answer anybody's question it was very clearly it's the same gazebo like it had notches <laughs> in this it was very clearly the same gazebo. yes it was um promoting hateful or harmful content Right. So putting your descriptions with um, slurs in it or kind of bashing other people who are wayfinding. Right. right? Because yep. sometimes the Wayfarer community can be a little bit toxic. Right. It can be. Yes, it can be. Uh, accessing Wayfarer clients or backends in an unauthorized manner, including through the use of third party software or add ons. That's been a niantic thing since day one. Right. Right. Back yep. when everyone figured out a backend access to Pokemon Go and it just kept crashing their servers. And they said, yep. no, we're done. All right, so that's that's the crux of what they consider violations, right? It's not an extensive list. It's not like the whole list. Wait, 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 hold on. So if I made a really bad waste spot, it's cold, uh, th- th- it doesn't fall into this? That's not what this no. is about? Nope. Are you sure? And that I'm 100% positive, right? So, and that's, and that's the thing, right? It's... If well, Twitter submit, said that would get me banned. Yes. Yes, they did. And they they argued with me till they were blue in the face, some of them, that I was wrong. Right? So if you're <laughs> nominating coal, right, and it's it's just like a bad way spot, they're not going to ban you for, for nominating silly things. Right, they're gonna not. They're gonna ban you for, and we shouldn't use the word ban. We should use the word suspend because it's not a right. ban necessarily. It's a suspension, right? If you do like a hundred of them, okay, we got a problem, right? Right, yeah. but yeah. if if you go out and put in a couple of bad nominations and they get rejected like they should, they're not gonna look at you. They don't care about you, right? They care right. about the heavy hitters. They care about the people trying to fake data on the map. Right. And here's the other thing, right? If there's one person who was like, I've had a bunch of rejections, I'm scared for my account. And I'm like, I said this to a couple of people. If you want, if you mm-hmm. feel comfortable sharing your nominations with me, yes. I'll take a look and give you some peace of mind and maybe give, give you some advice to try and get them approved. Right. And I had a couple of people mm-hmm. share stuff with me. And I'm like, honestly, this is most, a couple of these things are iffy. They're not going to get right. you banned. Don't worry. Your account is fine. But like these four, you should redo them. Or they you know these couple, I would put in an appeal, right? And people were like, "Thank you." Mm-hmm. It, one person had a. They tried to get a park in fourteen times before they finally appealed it and got I, it in. I remember. I remember you told me about that one. That's fourteen rejections for the same way spot. That person's not going to get banned because right. at the end of the day, what Niantic's going to do? They do not care about the community votes on any of your nominations, right? right? So Mm -hmm. they're going to look at your nominations. They don't care what happened to them. They don't care if it got approved. They don't care if it got denied. They don't care care if it got listed as a duplicate, right? They're going to look at your nominations on their face. They're going to say, is this abuse? No. Is this abuse? No. Is this abuse? No. Should some of this probably been approved? Yes. Yep. Do an appeal, right? And then you'll never even know. Exactly. You'll never know. Right? You never know. I, I'm, I'm glad you went into that depth on it because, oh boy, um, it was quite frustrating dealing with X the last yeah. few days because people were like, you know, how is my Pokemon Go account going to get banned because I don't know what the current criteria is. And if I submit this and it doesn't go through, then I'm going to lose seven years of this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, will you please just stop for a second and listen to me? Yeah. Niantic is not concerned specifically about your coal. The community might be concerned about your coal, but Niantic is not concerned about your coal. If you are not doing something on an enterprise scale, trying to access the back data of Niantic or trying to put together a voting ring, you're not the problem. If you are doing the things that you've been doing on a day in and day out basis, honestly, and doing your best, I get things rejected. You get things rejected. Things that I think, hey, I think this is legitimate. And the community says, no, that's not going to get you banned. I really want Twitter and everyone to bring the temperature down a little bit. If you don't want to listen to me and you don't want to listen to Chris, listen to one of the ambassadors. Listen to Tintino. Listen to Tib. Listen to Aaron. 
Niantic is not out to get your Pokemon Go account. Niantic is trying to, and specifically the Niantic Wayfarer team, is trying to make sure the game board is clean and that people aren't mm-hmm. doing these widespread cheating events like we've seen. We've seen legit four. I don't want to mention them by name because I don't want to call them. But I can think of at least three, if not four, really big cheating things in, in different parts of the world. And yeah. that's what this is meant to do. That's it. So do you do you want to go over the ladder? Do you want to go over this? We've kind of talked around it. You want to talk about the ladder? Yes. So now that we've covered what they consider violations, let's go over the ladder in a little bit slower pace than we did last time. So right. first steps of warning. Yep. Okay. So hold on. Let me let me go back, back up one step. Um, each step in this ladder, you will get an email, right? And Niantic has heard the feedback and they're crafting a better warning email that will, I, they were very vague about it, which is cool. I get it. Um, but they're crafting a better rejection email, right? And that's one of the things that people were, or better, not better rejection email, better warning email, right? Better warning email. Yeah. This is, this is key, I think, to this system is letting people know what they're doing wrong. Because if you're just like, hey, mm-hmm. you did bad things. And right. if that person's done 15, 20, 30, 50 nominations and reviewed 2,000 waste spots, like what in that pile is wrong? Right. You're just encouraging people to just like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm done. I don't want to do this. I was trying to explain this to my wife. And the way I explain it to her, it's like raising kids. Right. If my if one of my daughters does something wrong and I just give them a swat on the butt and say, you you know, bad, bad child and let them go. They don't necessarily know what they did wrong. But if I sit my daughter down and go, you know what, when you and your sister were out, out in the front yard and you were throwing the baseball up against the house and you broke the window, that was bad. Let me mm-hmm. tell you why. So now they know don't throw the baseball up against the house and potentially break the window as opposed to just going out there and give them a smack on the bottom and they don't really know what they did. That's kind of how I see this. Exactly. Right. And that's, and that's key. I think for me. Right. Uh, So yeah, the first step is a warning. They're going to, you're going to get a warning. Um, It's hopefully going to say at least generally what you've done wrong. Right. To give the person kind of a say, Hey, We've noticed that you're you're kind of doing stuff that you shouldn't be. Maybe you should stop. Mm-hmm. Right. And and that's that's step one, which is a fair yep. step one. That's fair. Um, I agree. If if it gets to the point where you're just like you're like chronic voting ring, thousand fake way spots when they catch you, they reserve the right to kind of skip steps in this, which is not mm-hmm. it's not a new policy. It's right. something that companies have done probably for a hundred years, right? So right. that's not a new thing. It's not a Niantic thing. It's just a thing that happens, right? So depending on your level of abuse, and if you're just a common everyday wayfarer, you're going to get a warning because you're not going to be enterprise level level right. abuse, right? Exactly. Step two is a 30-day suspension, right? So you, again, get the email saying that you've done something wrong and it will describe what you've been doing wrong um and then you will get a suspension from wayfair and all niantic games so that's pogo ingress pikmin monster um peridot perido not my monster hunter not my, oh, my monster hunter. <laughs> don't take my Chris, monster do you, away do you want me to take a second to explain why why it's all Niantic games and not just one. Should, should we talk yes. about that for a hot second? So okay. that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about that. All right. So this kind of goes back to something that we've talked about a long time ago. And I think you said it the best. Wayfair is kind of the backbone of all the Niantic games. No Wayfarer. There's nothing to spin. There's nothing to hack. There's nothing to to do whatever you do in Monster Hunter. There's no flowers. There's nothing if you don't have don't have um, waste spots, right? And yep. this goes back before Wayfarer. This goes back to OPR. I remember OPR, yeah, yeah. Operation Portal Recon. So it goes back to that when it had to be an Ingress agent to get something in the game. If you were a Pogo player, you had to go find an Ingress agent and say, hey, can you nominate this for me? Yep. So OPR slash Wayfair is the backbone of the game. It is imperative 
that the game board remains as clean as possible because I've seen just in the two years I've been doing this podcast and in the eight, nine months Chris has been doing this podcast, we've seen two or three games come on that are using the Lightship database and the POIs for different games. So it's bigger than Poco. It's bigger than English. It's bigger than a lot of things. So if you are someone who is manipulating the game, I see it as 100% appropriate for the company to restrict everything that's associated with that game board. So you can't come in and do Wayfair abuse, but still be able to use your Pogo account or your Ingress account. If you are going to take the steps to try to manipulate the source game board, then everything gets suspended. I have zero issues with that. Yep. At me. Same here. Right. And um, remember back when we had the Foundry 6 team on? For Aaron, yes. yes. So other companies are starting to use this map. So think of Niantic is now outsourcing this, and they're saying, "Hey, companies, you can use our map." Imagine if there were things on this map that weren't real. Right. Why would anybody want to use a map with a bunch of fake stuff on it? Right. right. So yep, you're you're taking away. Part of the part of the thing that Niantic is trying to accomplish, and that's mm-hmm. create an AR type world where you can go and play mobile games or do other things in the real world. Mm-hmm. It's their thing, right? So you can't <laughs> mess with their thing. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, to me, it seems simple. But then again, I'm the guy that's done forty thousand reviews and yeah. have like three hundred and fifty four fifty things in the game, so. I'm not necessarily the person who I, I, I get it already. You know, they're kind of preaching to the choir. So mm-hmm. I, I want to speak directly to the people who have done a hundred nominations, right? Or a hundred, I'm sorry, a hundred reviews and maybe 35 nominations. And they're not sure. They're the person you were talking about earlier that I'm driving down the road and I see a statue. I don't know the resources out there to find out if that's in the game or not. I could be submitting a duplicate. I have no idea. I'm looking on my app, but I don't see it in the game. And I take a picture and I submit it, having no idea that it's in another game. So that's the person to speak to right now. No, 100%. Absolutely. Right. And this is the thing. If if you're going to play poorly with one of Niantic's toys, why are they going to let you play with all the other toys? Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, if you you break my car toy, I'm not going to hand you my, you know, my Transformer robot. Right. You you broke the first one. You're going to break the second one. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Step three is a 90-day suspension. So they jump from 30 to 90. Um. Same kind of thing. You'll get another email saying, hey, despite your warning, despite your 30-day suspension, you continue to abuse the system. Here's a 90-day ban from Wayfair and all the Niantic games. 90 days is significant. That's like three months. It is. That's a long time. That's that's like an entire Pogo season or entire Ingress season, right? That's a a long time. That's That's a hefty, hefty suspension. That is. You're Um, right. That is. That is an entire Pogo season. Yeah. So at this point, if you have gotten to step three and you've gotten your 90 day suspension and you get your account back and you make it 365 days without a further infraction, and this goes for anything for step three or previous, right? Mm-hmm. If you are clean for an entire year, Niantic will wipe your slate clean. So all you have to do is be good for a year. Good for a year. And then you don't have to kind of worry about hitting step four because stoop step four is um <laughs> Step four is a monster. It is. Step it's, four it's is heavy. we are it's tired heavy. of you and yeah. Tinkaton's gonna hit you with a hammer. Um <laughs> yeah. So like, even if you get a warning, right? Like if you if you're clean for a year after that, they they get rid of the warning. Or if even if you get a 30 day ban, you, right. you're clean for a year, it's gone. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not a stain no. on your account, which I think is really nice of Niantic to do. Can I say one thing people. here? Yeah. yeah. Can I say one thing here? So Niantic is not made public, and they probably won't make public who they've banned or how long they've banned. Oh, but for sure. from what I've seen on the internet and, and what I've seen some of the ambassadors post, 
obviously they don't know the insides and outs as well. But what I do know is if people have been banned, it's been 100% warranted. And yeah. people who I trust have said that. And I believe yeah. them. That if, you, if you've been caught up most recently in a type of ladder event or ban event, you have 100% earned your ban or earned your suspension. So I, and, and you and I both have put out on Twitter, if this is you, DM us, right? Here's our email address. Here's my phone number. Text me. Mm -hmm. Send it to me. Send me your evidence. I will go to the people who I have contact with at Niantic and I will say, hey, here's, you know, Johnny. This is what Johnny did. Here's the information. Can you look at it? Mm -hmm. And you know what, Chris? People don't want to do that. I'm like, why? If I was innocent, I'd be screaming to the hills and, and, and emailing everybody these and I am innocent. But people are like, nah, dog, I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Yep. Exactly. Right. And if there was a couple people I saw on, I think it was on the forums that were just like, I want all of my data. So Niantic, if you request it and I'll find the link and I'll, I'll put it in the, sh the show notes are going to have so many links in it. Um, I'll put the link in the show yeah, notes. No. There is a way that you can <laughs> request all of your personal data from Niantic and they will give you all of your nominations uh, and all your reviews too, right? Mm -hmm. That you've ever done in Wayfair. So you can compile that information if it would make you feel better, if you're worried about a ban, that way you have that information to kind of sort through and make a case for an appeal because they let you appeal. Right. So if you want that, there is that route that you can go before you get it's to. It's to kind of like before. a Freedom of Information Act for all it of is. your It's 100% what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think Europe has kind of the same laws and I'm not sure how it works in Canada, to be honest with you, but I know that there's the freedom of information act in the U S and that's where they're based. Right. So yep, they have to, right. Yep. Uh, All right you want to go over four? step four? <laughs> step four. Step <laughs> four is a, um, they fly the stealth jet over your account and drop <laughs> a very large bomb on you because exactly. it is a 3,650 day suspension. That is slightly less than 10 years. They call that Can a 10 I, year suspension, but it's there's leap years in there's leap days in there, so it's right, not quite yeah. a 10 years. It's yeah. Can, can I draw can I draw a parallel for that? Yeah. Um, absolutely. Pokemon Go has not even been out for 3650 days. <laughs> Ingress has. Ingress has. has. Yep. But Pokemon Go has not been out that long. So essentially that is um that's a death sentence, essentially. It so, is. Yeah. yeah. That is, but, that is 100 Chris, percent a the way I look at it, the way I look at it, um, it reads after step three, if a wayfarer continues to abuse the system despite the warning, the 30-day suspension, the 90-day suspension, they will receive an email informing them that further abuse has been detected and the and warnings to stop the behavior immediately. That's when you get the 3650. You got the warning, you got mm -hmm. the 30-day, you got the 90-day. I'm big on, like, if I did something wrong and I earned it, I'll accept my punishment. If I cheat it once and I cheat it twice and I cheated a third time and then I went back into the pool for a fourth dip, it's kind of on me at that point, right? Uh, yeah, 100%. Right? And like I said, and I will say it again, if anybody gets the 10-year ban and, and, and you feel comfortable sending me the information, I will take it to the people I know and help you get it unbanned, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty confident. I don't have a stack of Bibles over here or a bunch of money laying around. Wait, I think I do have a $20 bill. I will put money on it that if you get in your ban, you earned it. Oh, and if you yeah, didn't 100%. earn it, I will help you. I will help you. But I I could, I, Chris, yeah. I, I would almost bet a paycheck that if you get the ban, you, you did it. And if you didn't, I'll give you the paycheck. There it yeah, is. no, hundred percent. If you get to step four and and they suspend you for three thousand six hundred and fifty days, there's like a point zero zero one percent chance that you didn't earn that. Like, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's. Yep. Yeah. So if you do, so you talked about the redemption period, but let's say yeah. for example, I do get a warning. Well, what what am I? Am I stuck? If I get the if I get a warning or if I get a thirty day Chris, am I stuck or what? What can I do? No, they have they've opened up an appeal, right? So at the bottom of the blog, and again, 
link in the show notes. Um, <laughs> the show notes is going to be just a literally a page of links. So. It's just going to be a page of links, um, which is good because people need these things. There yeah, is there is an appeal, right? And there is a, a form you can fill out. It's like a Google form. Um, I, I haven't clicked it, to be honest with you. I didn't look. Um, I don't know what it asks for. But Niantic will say, hey, we understand that there can be false positives. There are there are ways that we may come to a decision that is incorrect. We are humans right. after all. Yep. They they did say in in the blog post that they say that they're very very confident in the decisions that they make and they spend enough mm -hmm. time going after those decisions and researching those decisions that you're probably not going to get your ban overturned, but Right. It has they can be wrong. It has banned people incorrectly in the past. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they've made and they've made mistakes. I mean, as we record this show, there's an issue going on in the forums and on the Wayfair discussion Discord where I believe Niantic may have made an error. And I kind of put my two cents in a uh, situation that's currently going on right now. And by the time you listen to this, it may or may not be resolved. Um, but I mean, oh, they're resolved. human. Oh, it is resolved. Okay, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't see the the final resolution yeah. right before. Not to, sorry to cut you off, but like right. Before no, you're good. We went, we went live. Okay. They uh, they posted again. So I'll mention okay, it in a second. But sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it is it is possible. So we're all humans. Um, Chris and I, you know, more me than Chris, have had to come on on a show and go, "Hey, you know what? Last week, guys, I crapped the bed. I was wrong. I'm <laughs> gonna say, hey, you know, this is not what I said. Was we're humans. Mm -hmm. We're all humans, and I think." The best thing about Niantic and the people that want to know is if they do something wrong, they will come out and say, hey, it was wrong. Yep. This is not how it was. So that's why I'm glad this appeal is here for the warning or suspension because things happen. Yep. 100%. Right. And yeah, I think it was like there was two weeks in a row that I said something that was incorrect. So <laughs> we're human. Well, the, right? different, the difference was you you blamed for it. Someone just kind of DM me, but you got called out. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I I replied to a tweet from the way spotters Twitter a little aggressively. Right. So and I, I when they responded, I went back and I said, you know what? I apologize. That was aggressive. It was not my intention. Uh, I know that this is, you know, you didn't mean it the way. And like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I it was aggressive yep. and I shouldn't have been. And I apologize. And they were like, wow, thank you. Right. So mm -hmm. be adults. When you make yep. a mistake, I'm sorry. It's very simple. Right. You don't say I'm sorry, but you're just like, you know what? As yep. a human, as an adult, I have erred. <laughs> exactly. My error has affected you in some way. And for that, I apologize. Right. And Niantic will do the exact same thing. Now, so, Chris, tell me, how does Niantic come to these decisions? Because I don't know. Tell me. So this is a big section. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on social media regarding how Niantic makes their decisions. Um, Niantic Aaron responded to a question saying Niantic spends a significant amount of time individually looking at every single reported case of abuse to determine if it warrants a punishment. And here's here's the thing, right? And this is what I think a lot of people didn't quite understand, right? They There's some people on Twitter that were just like, if I get a bunch of rejections, it's gonna trigger a ban. The, the, the ban robot or the suspension robot's gonna automatically ban me, right? And it's, that's not true. Any, any suspension or any warning that comes from the Wayfair team comes from a humanly generated report. Somebody says, hey, Niantic, can you please look at this? Mm -hmm. Right. Someone has to say, I would like you to investigate this person or this waste spot or that collection of waste spots or that country of waste spots if you're the right. Netherlands, right? It there's no robot that's just like flagging accounts because they had stuff rejected. They don't they don't care, right? Because Niantic right. understands there are bad reviewers out there. So yes. that if your park is rejected 14 times, you're not going to show up on some watch list at Niantic headquarters, right? <laughs> it's, it's some alarm's not going to go off in the Wayfair room with right. like, a, like a a monitor <laughs> with your face on it. <laughs> Bad Wayfair detected. And that's not how this yeah, works, exactly. right? Not so not how it works. Like, and I've, I, 
it's funny because before I started this podcast, I think I had reported two people. And after I've joined this this podcast, I think. <laughs> oh, <reported> boy. <laughs> many. Yeah. So, They're like, oh, it's you again. <laughs> yeah. And it's always the same people, right? Yeah, it but is. Yeah. Nobody, nothing would have happened to those people who were cheating because those reports mm-hmm. that came back and were like, yep, you're right. We took action. No, nothing would have happened to those yeah. wayfinders if because... nobody had reported it. The bad actors bank on people going, they bank that people will say, I don't have time out of my day to go right. chase this down. And yep. people are going to go, eh, it's not hurting anything. Yeah. But then there's people like us who understand the picture. And I don't mean, I, that sounded really condescending. So let me just stop right there. I don't mean like people like us, like we're way better than anybody, but people who understand that this, platform is used for other games and play other games and have talked to people outside of the niantic core Mm -hmm. like the people from foundry six who are trying to build a completely new game using the game and understand how important it is for those things to be where they say they are and what they say they are because they're like putting their hard-earned money into this and using those on purpose so that's what i mean by that yep 100 percent, right and i've said from day one when I joined this podcast, one of my main interests with Wayfind, Wayfarer, one of my main goals is ensuring that the map and the game boards are clean. Yep. Right. That's very important to me. Yep. And Absolutely. There was there's people on Twitter who were just like, nobody's doing Wayfarer more than they're they're playing Pogo. Like, Absolutely, there are. Right. <laughs> there are some weeks that yeah. I play Pogo or Ingress very little, but I spend hours doing reviews or hours right. researching way spots or three hours collecting information on some people who are abusing Wayfarer. Right. I think I spent more time doing that that week than I did playing any of the games. <laughs> right? right. So we're like it, head down. We exist. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. This is important to us. And it's not just a means to an end for a lot of people, right? For like for some people and you know, that's fine. It's, it's cool your end game is to get more stops in Pokemon Go. That's cool. That's get it. We get it, right? right? That's for a lot of people, ensuring the game board is clean is a priority. But nothing's going to happen to the people who cheat if nobody exactly. reports them. That's right. right? I remember so, back in March, there was one weekend I nominated 35 POIs. And I think the next weekend you were like right around that same number. Yeah. That was like the most important thing for me when it came to yeah. gaming that week was I found a huge spot on the map where there was nothing. And I was just like mm-hmm. a pig in slop. I'm like, I am going <laughs> to light this thing up, you know? And then you yep. went to the town. I, th- I think it was when you went up by your parents or you were near Toronto. You were somewhere outside of your normal play. You just nominated everything. So yeah. we are out there. We are definitely out there. It was my uh, my son's lacrosse tournament. Um, there you go. That's what it was. I that whole weekend we were there. I think I literally played Pogo for 15 minutes, just long enough to spin all the stops, get rid of the halos, and then right. it was Wayfair. Yeah. Right. It was nothing but Wayfair. And I'm still waiting for for um some of those nominations to go through. Don't get me started, Chris. Me started. <laughs> but I got a question um, for you. So how did we get here? How did we get here? So Wayfair abuse has been a problem for a very, very long time. Like, way back to the OPR days. Wayfarer abuse has been a thing, right? And back in the OPR days, it wasn't necessarily as bad because the inclusion rules for Ingress aren't nearly as restrictive as they are for for Pogo, right? Like, the, the Wayfarer team, just to put it into perspective, how bad this abuse thing that the Wayfair team has recently removed over 1,500 way spots from the Netherlands. And I think we've mentioned that on the show a couple of times, right? So that's 1,500 illegal way spots just from one country alone. Right. They've issued Wayfair suspensions. They've dealt out punishments within the Wayfair system for a while. And, like, it hasn't worked. People, people just keep rolling on. So... Niantic has essentially decided to step up the punishments and effectively say, hey, we're going to start hitting you where it hurts. Mm -hmm. We're going to start hitting you in that Pogo account that you've 
been playing since 2019, then it's now level 50 and you have thousands of hours playing, right? Or that you've, you know, kind of playing since it launched, or we're going to hit you in your Ingress account that you've been playing since what, 2012 when Ingress launched, right? That's yeah. 11 years of Ingress <laughs> playing that just, they're going to go just, after. just over 3,600 days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, because the Wayfarer abuse affects all, and you mentioned this earlier, it affects all of the games in some way. So, and it affects, it, it's, this is another thing that, that Andis sent a tweet out um, saying that the majority of the problem, we've mentioned this before, the majority of the problem is pogo players, right? And, and right. a lot of pogo players don't like hearing that. Right. But it's true. Who? And right. just got called an elitist. We yes. got called an elitist, being elitist yes. also. And, and just to, to touch on your point there, there was a time, like I said, where you had to be an Ingress player in order to nominate. And then yep. there was that glorious time when they added all the Pogo players and like everybody's backlog went to zero because things yep. were just getting approved left and right. We are at the spot now, and this is not saying anything bad about Pogo players. I'm a Pogo player. Mm-hmm. I probably identify I, I identify on the forums as an Ingress player because that's how I came to it. But people who play Ingress, and this is just this is facts from the way I see it, right? So if you have, if you disagree with what, please let's engage in a little bit of conversation. But I fully and fundamental fundamentally believe people who are level eight, nine, ten, twelve, up to sixteen in Ingress have a much better understanding of why POIs are where they are on the game board because in order to be a higher level Ingress player, you have to interact interacted with the Intel map in order to do baths or anything or just to draw mm-hmm. a dang triangle, you have to know where the three points of interest are to draw the triangle. And if yep. you're trying to do some spectacular rhombus or something, you've got to know where it is. So you have had to have interacted with the map. You've had to understand why that map is where it is and why it's so important that those things are where they should be in order to draw the triangle. Most, most, right? Just just follow me. Most Pokemon Go players who've never played Ingress, who've never played any of the other games, don't know the history and the lore ITC and what it is to understand that there's a method to the madness. It's not just, I want as many spinners as possible that there's some strategery. I don't even know if that's a word, but there's some strategery of why (laughs) it is what it is. And that's one of the things that you and I talked when you agreed to come on this podcast, you weren't going to come on unless we were going to people. That was something that you were really big on. And I'm like, dude, I'm all for it. You're like, Hey, Mm -hmm. if we're not telling people the right way to do things, I don't want to do it. That's why I'm glad you're here. Um, But I say all that to say, I don't want it to seem like I'm singling out Pokemon Go players only. So if you just play Pokemon Go and you're listening to the podcast, we're not saying you're the problem. Mm -hmm. We're saying more Pokemon Go players versus Ingress players are the problem. I think that's a fact. If you just look at the numbers and the percentages, not singling anybody out, but I'm saying if you've never played Ingress at a high level, you've probably never interacted with the map and you don't understand the specifics of a point of interest. Now, some people who are Pokemon Go players only who are Wayfarers who do understand, and I get that, but I'm saying the singular mono game Pokemon Go player only, I believe has probably a lesser understanding of why points of interest are so important where they are. So that's my completely rant. There's, there's more of a learning curve to kind of get to to a higher level in Ingress than there is Pokemon Go, right? Right. And and I think that there's other people. Are there people who abuse the system who are Ingress players? Absolutely. Yes, hundred um, percent. There was a portal downtown Oshawa that was literally a flock of seagulls. Somebody <laughs> took a picture of a flock of seagulls in the middle of a road, nominated it, and it was. It was a portal, and then it got. It was one of the seed portals for Pokemon Go when it launched. Mm-hmm. It's fixed now, um, mm-hmm. but like when when Pogo first when they had first introduced Wayfair, and they were like, "Hey, Pogo, congratulations! You can nominate Pokestops, right? You can nominate yeah. with." And there was just like anybody who was level forty was like gangbusters, 
Right. And there was a lot of coal. Yes. Because I think a lot of Pokemon Go players were just like, Pokestop, 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 Pokestop. Right. Right. And which is fair because the game had been out since 2016. You had a three year gap there where we couldn't do anything. And then they released it to us, and a lot of people kind of went ham, which is understandable. Right. You brand yep. new shiny toy, you want to go out yep. and use it. So there was a lot of friction between Ingress players and and Pogo oh, okay. players about kind of what was good and what wasn't. And people were just like, I remember being on the forums, you know, like this wouldn't make this wouldn't happen in Ingress and Ingress agents are and like I would res- I would reply with the picture of the flock of seagulls portal every time. I'm like, tell me again how Ingress agents. Don't yep. do this. Like, come on. I, I understand that it's less. But and that's kind of where the gatekeepers were born, right. I believe. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't act like your people don't do this. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Everybody, Because there were people that were... It, it happened in Charlotte. There's a statue. It's fixed now. But there's a statue in front of Bank of America Stadium of Sam Mills. And he's, you know, the first Panther to go into the Hall of Fame. There's a statue of him that at the time... There was three portals for one statue. There was a picture of him at each wow. angle, and oh. they were there. And, and the reason they did that is because people were building these starbursts, and they mm. were using those portals to go to hit, or they were, you know, going out. And it yep. was like, yep. okay, I see what you're doing here. It was like the front, the side, and the back. Like, at that time, they had them. I mean, they were literally sitting right on top of each other. So you could stand at one portal, get all three, and just send them out. So Ingress players are not innocent at all there right. all all the players have misused the system i'm just saying that because there are more pokemon go players there's just the bear out that there's going to be more pokemon go players that are doing that versus yep. a smaller player base and and here's the thing right and you're completely right and i i would even go so far as to say that the percentage of the pokemon go player base that abuses the system is higher than the percentage of the Ingress player base that abuses the system, right? Because I can get behind that. Because you have to manipulate the game board more to get stops into Pogo because right. of the way the that it because rules. of the inclusion rules, right? Yep. So that's how we got here, right? The the mm-hmm. com- to go back for a circle to what we were talking about. That's how we got here. We got here because the punishments that they were doling out didn't work. So now they are taking away more to further decentivize people from doing abuse, right? Because if you're going to lose your game account, you're going to think twice. You should think twice. Some people probably won't, but you should think twice about abusing the system. Right? And if, if you're abusing Wayfair, right? And you're creating all these fake waste bots to appear in whatever Niantic game that you play. And they're just like, all right, we're going to take your Wayfarer account now away. You've, st- you've still got all of that work that you've done. And right. you get to still enjoy the, the fruits of your labor. Because maybe Niantic didn't catch all of your abuse. Right. right? Yep. So maybe they caught 10 of your fake waste bots. But you get to still enjoy the other 40. Like, why would mm-hmm. they do that? Right. Yep. Like, doesn't make any sense. I mean, I mean, it makes sense. And like, I, I I'll go back to Wayfair is the cornerstone of all Niantic games. The, mm-hmm. Or I'll say the lights, the lightship data, lightship base, right? Let's the lightship yep. map. So if you're going to abuse something at the core, then everything that touches gets suspended. I, I have there's there's people who are going to flame me up and and call yep. me all kind of names and and say bad things about you and I, and then spell our podcast wrong. I'm like, if you're going to say bad things about me, at least spell my name, right. Right. At least spell my name, right. At least give the correct name of our podcast. If you're going to call us a booker or yeah, I don't even remember so many nasty things have been said about us, but I don't care about that because I think I'm right. I feel I'm right. I'm on the side of justice here. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you're going to, manipulate the game board then anything that touches that game board should be up for grabs yep 100 percent, absolutely right and it, it goes back to the the toy analogy from earlier like if you're going to break one toy why are we going to let you play with all the other ones we're not absolutely so now should you be worried should we be worried chris so honestly i'm i'm not going to change anything about how i wayfair um okay i'm going to keep doing everything the way i've been doing it um anybody who's 
nominating waste spots according to the rules, you're fine. Don't worry. Like we said earlier, they're they're going after enterprise level people. They're going after people who are yep. chronic abusers. They're going after people who are doing things that are very clearly not eligible. And that's the, so when you talk about, you? about things, are you going to change your are you yeah. going to change your way for habits? I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change anything I'm doing. Um, because you know, and and I sit here as the guy who's the what's a few meters between friends. I'm even toying putting that on a shirt, right? Um, <laughs> but I'm not abusing the system. No. I, I'm not. I'm not firing with people in the secret Discord to go in and vote at a certain time and do X, Y, and Z like mm -hmm. that. Like, no, I'm not doing that. So I, there's nothing, Chris. Today, September the 22nd, Second. 2023, there's nothing that I that I am 1% worried about that can mm -hmm. get my account banned. There is yep. nothing that I'm doing or I've done that I am concerned about at all. I yep. feel good. Same I can go to, lay down, go to sleep right now, feel good about it. And I believe 97% yep. of the Wayfinders out there fit in the same boat. There are and a bad actors. There might even be a little bit more than that, but there are some bad actors out there. There's also spoopers in Pokemon Go. There's also people doing some really ugly things in Ingress that I don't even want to mention, yeah. but there's those people out there. But I think if you're listening to this podcast, you probably don't fall into that uh, category because we don't speak nicely about those people. I don't think mm -hmm. we want to hear it flame them up every week. So if you're listening to this, you're probably fine. If you're scared, you shouldn't be. So Chris is going to tell you how you can stay within the guidelines so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I want to mention one thing before we go on to that. Somebody on Twitter was like, well, I live in a rural community and there's only like six of us that, that do Wayfarer. How, they're going to think we're a voting ring because we're always voting on the nominations. They go, how are they going to deter? That's, that's not a voting ring. If you're that's voting according to the guidelines, then you're fine. Sure, right. you're always voting on something that's that's nominated in your area, but that's how voting works, right? That's how. That's not a voting how, ring, right? But Chris and I don't want to explain what a voting ring is because we don't no. want to bring light to it. But that is not a voting ring. I could, if you want to DM me, I could tell you what a voting ring is, but it is not that. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> if if you live in a small town and you're worried about Niantic thinking that you're part of a voting ring, they won't. Unless you're nominating the same trail marker at 87 different spots in a forest that has no trails and they're all fake, then then you're fine. Don't worry about it. You're good. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. You are good. Yep. So, And here's the thing. If, just to close off, should you be worried? If, and and Jamal will do the same thing. DM us at Wastewaters on the Twitter. DM us on Discord. If you are at all concerned about anything that you've previously nominated, or you can email us too, or anything that you're planning on nominating, and and we'll help you, and we will give you honest advice. Like you, mm -hmm. if you sure. DM us something and you're like, "Hey, I want to nominate this," and we think that it's not eligible, we'll tell you. Right? Yep, for sure. And, and we'll we'll help you find a way to right. make it eligible. Better picture, yep. better description, better supporting information. Um, and told people you might not want to nominate that, but in the background, what's that other thing over there? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a statue. Go take a picture of that. Forget about yep. the thing you were trying to nominate. That's iffy. Go get this the slam dunk. You know, it's in the same cell. So yeah. Yep. Right. So that leads me perfect segue into how can I ensure that I'm staying within the guidelines? Right. So I listed in the article, I think there's three or four different ways, right? So first one is the official Wayfarer forums. Um, for the 75 fifth time today, link in the description. Um, <laughs> this is a forum run and man maintained by the Niantic Wayfarer team. So this is the official forum for Niantic Wayfarer. Yep. They are in there all the time. The ambassadors are in there answering questions almost 24 seven. Um, cause they have ambassadors all over the globe yep. and Every we're going to talk about the ambassadors in a little bit. Um, they have sections for criteria clarification. Like if, if you have something that you want to nominate and you're not sure if it falls into one of the pillars, you can go there and you can post it and you can ask. 
right? And because this is run by Niantic, there's very, very, very few trolly people. And if any, I don't think there's any, right? They're very, very good at maintaining this and keeping it civil with everyone. And everyone who's in there, everybody. Forum, yeah, I keep telling Niantic might be the uh, Wayfair might be the smartest, smartest Niantic team because yeah. they stay off of Twitter. And they, yeah. so the funny thing is all the misinformation, Chris has been on Twitter. There was no misinformation on the forums. They yep. quickly answered the questions and it was all on Twitter. And which is funny because the, anyways, who were spreading the misinformation on Twitter probably don't know the forums exist because they're not wayfinders. Anyhow, continue, please. Sorry. I had to, or they know that the forums exist and they don't go there because they can't spread their misinformation there. Exactly. Um, it also has a section for nomination improvement. So if you have something rejected, you can go there and say, hey guys, this is this is eligible, right? How do I get this approved? And people will help you with your title, with your description, with your photo, um, with your pin placement, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you don't like forums, there is the Wayfair discussion discord. That is also, again, full of, it's not an official discord. It is run by a couple of the ambassadors, but there's a lot of ambassadors who are in that discord. And there are a lot of people in that discord who are they're there because they love wayfair so they were there to help you um they have channels for reviewing advice so if you're doing reviews and you come across something you're like is this cool is this eligible i don't know what category it falls into you can post it in there and there's enough people in there someone will probably answer um you can get advice just like the forums on on stuff you've had rejected or stuff you want to criteria that you want to um get clarified and all that, right? So that's a great resource. I'm in there, not as often as I, I think I should be, um, but right, a lot yeah, of people are very, very active in that Discord. It's a great place. I was in there today. I, I spent a, quite a bit of time in, also link in the description. Uh, link in the yeah, description. It, it's, a, yep. it's a great, it's it's really, it's a really great Discord. Um, any question you can think of, somebody in there will give you an intelligent answer. I'll say that. Yep. Yeah, 100%, right? And chances are uh, it's a question that somebody else has asked before, right? So even mm -hmm. if there's not experts who are readily available, there are other people who who have had that question and gotten an answer. Yep. Um, lastly, like I said before, follow us on Twitter, follow our YouTube, mm -hmm. listen to our podcast. We are here to help people reach out to us. We are more than happy to find nominations for you help you with titles, descriptions, photos, pins, placements, all that sort of stuff. Jamal and I are, are here to help. We are. And people said we could never do this on a weekly basis. We could have done right? three shows this week. We could have absolutely <laughs> done three shows this week. Like this episode is probably going to be an hour and a half long. I know, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the, the gist of what had happened. Um, See what had happened was what had happened was <laughs> I said that on Twitter <laughs> yeah. when I when I goofed up there. Um, there I wanted to read next. So Niantic Aaron, let me pull this up. So somebody has said in the forum. So again, official Wayfarer forums, great place to go get clarification requests. Um, so if you have a Wayfair forums and you're watching this on YouTube, so if you're listening to this on audio, flip over to YouTube and you can get a look at what the forums look like. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, you're probably familiar with the forums, but if you're not, what you're seeing on your screen right now for our YouTube or potentially TikTok and everybody else, Instagram, this is what the Wayfair forums look like. So if you're listening to the audio version, do us a favor, flip over here. You can see it, find the link in the description. Sorry, continue. No, no good. So uh, on that note, see over here on the right hand side, there's a section and I'll highlight it real quick here. Uh, community and discussion, general discussion, criteria, clarifications, nomination improvement. These uh, have like 3000 posts, so they are well used. Um, so on the forum, uh, Smanzor, I think is the name. Mm -hmm. uh, said, so would it be possible for Niantic to provide some clarifications and or reassurances, reassurances on the 30-day Wayfair game bans being handed out? Initially, it was speculated that this would be a tool for cleaning up the abuse room in the Netherlands. However, it sounds like people across the globe are experiencing game account suspensions due to this. Right. Um, and it mentions Zionic's video. 
Um, so scroll down. Niantic Aaron posted, and that was like super quick. Like they posted it on the 19th, yeah. and Aaron got back to them like the next day. Um, thanks for voicing your concerns. I assure you that the punishments are handed out after proper investigation by our team. We do not hand out punishments for auto rejections by the system or for nominations that fall in the gray area. This is what we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. If you're nominating things that are, eh, it's not going to trigger a ban. You're fine. Right. Exactly. Um, while our team may remove some waste spots, they do not always trigger punishments. So even if someone reports your eh, waste spot that got approved, Niantic's, chances are Niantic's going to look at it and go, I don't really want that on my map, but that's not necessarily a race. Right. So exactly. We're good. Yep, right? They're just going to exactly. take it away and then see you later. Um, yep. Posts on social media do not always paint the complete picture, complete picture and thus may be misleading. We hand out punishments for clear violations of our policies that may include repeated low quality submissions, fake submissions, influencing reviewers, harassing others, and participating in voting rings. That was fantastic. That's a great clarification, I think. It was. Um, I, I think the best part of that um, was the part about social media, and it said, with all due respect, I mm. love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's so great. Um, and I, and I think just I've said I just said it five minutes ago. Wayfarer might be the smartest people for staying off of Twitter. They yep. can control the message here. And if if Aaron were to have posted this on Twitter, it would have got shot down by so many comments and this and that. But here it is in black and white. So I love it. I think that's great. And I think I think this is Niantic growing with the community yes. and understanding that the message may have been a little fuzzy. And they needed to come out with some clarification to assuage some fears of people. And I think mm -hmm. this was clear communication. This is not from the Wayfarer team. This is what I think everybody wants from the Pokemon Go team or the Ingress team. But like, yeah. hey, we put something out. It caused some issues. Here's the clarification. Let's go. Yeah. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yep. Um, Tintito posted today. So this is the thing that you hinted at earlier. Yes. Um, and this is what I was talking about earlier, too. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Let me add some clarity to the emails being sent out. When someone receives an email, the intro part of the email will contain the we have detected abuse activities on your account. However, that is not where the email will end. In the body of the email, it will also include a description of the cause for the suspension or warning. The descriptions will be improving soon as we gather more feedback. I hope this helps clarify the situation. So that's what we were talking about earlier. Um, yep. With Niantic needing to give people better feedback when they get these warning emails, because just saying, like you were saying earlier, just kind of smacking you on the butt and saying, "Hey, that's not right." Right. What's not right? I need to. I need specifics, yep. right? And that's I think is key. So hopefully that rolls out sooner rather than later. Right. And there was um, one other thing that Tintino said um, in another post, and I'll just read part of it. We might go over the whole thing, but it said when it comes to rate of the suspensions and warnings it's not a one two three strikes and you're out method each infraction is taken into consideration so when we added the when we added that the warnings or suspension would be proportional to the infraction we meant it just like niantic aaron said if if someone does not indulge in this is there's nothing to worry mm -hmm. we know there have been some high exposure cases and we have very thoroughly looked into their behavior prior to their suspicions less warnings and after they've been after they've submitted an appeal he said a lot there yeah, um, yeah. you know it, it's not it, it's part of a voting ring they might skip straight to the 90 days they might skip over the warring and the 30 days but if you are not indulging in these practices you don't have to worry about it <laughs> i don't know I, I, I said that in my dad voice, like like I'm talking mm -hmm. to my kids and there's a bunch of people around. I'm like, you don't stop doing that. You know, but, right, you know that voice, right? But, I do. So I recognize if, it if very clearly. If you're not yeah. cheating, yeah, if you're not cheating, you don't have to worry. Oh, I mm -hmm. just made a thumbnail. Um, but seriously. 100%. Like, yeah. Oh, I get so exhausted because people who – I just – I get so – if you're not yeah. cheating, this is not aimed at you. If you are a bad wayfarer, 
you're probably going to get some feedback that you're submitting bad stops, but you're not going to get banned. I wish, I wish there was a team at Niantic that would kind of count the number of rejections and kind of, you know, audit them and go, was this a submitter problem or is this a reviewer problem? Mm. And if it was a submitter problem, hell, I'll even volunteer to be on the team, reach out to them and say, hey, in the last six months, you've had X amount of, you know, POIs rejected for this reason. Let me know if you want help. And if it's a nominator problem, hey, 30% of the things you one star are overturned on appeal by Niantic. Can we help you with your reviewing? So mm -hmm. something along those lines. I'd love to see it. Yeah, me too. Right. Um, Rocket League introduced a... Uh, what they call a, a rage queuing stop. Uh, so yeah. like if you lose a bunch of matches in a row, the game will prompt you to just take a break. <laughs> so I would love to see the same thing. I would love to see Wayfarer be like, hey, you've had you know X number of rejections. Uh, do, would you like a member of the Wayfarer team or like the Wayfarer support group to reach out to you to help you? Oh, I yeah, I like that. that it's almost cool. like I a love that. It's like a, it's like a cool down. Hmm. Yeah, like not necessarily, cool. not necessarily like stop them from 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 doing it, but just say, hey, right? Would you like some help? We have help. We right. can give a timeout. A timeout. Right. Just, just timeout. Yeah, just maybe time maybe. Shh. <laughs> no. Um, and you know, in that post from Tintino, they said that they've been working on this for months, mm -hmm. right? And some of the ambassadors were just like, we have been working on this a, a very long time. And I, I think that when the first cohort of ambassadors, they kind of gave everybody little pet projects to work on and things to kind of mm -hmm. improve the system. And this year they didn't, this time with this cohort, they didn't, I think because they just got everybody in room and were like, all right, abuse. Yeah, Go. exactly. Right. Yep. And I think this is yep. fantastic. So, yeah, I think we're both like, like you said, we're both on the abuse train. We want to, we want the game board to be clean. Everybody to have a fair shot at things. And, you know, some of the things I saw on social media, I'll just say it was Twitter, was, well, I live in Manhattan, Kansas, and you live in Manhattan, New York, and it's not fair that you have more than me. You know, I don't, I, that doesn't give you, an, that doesn't give you reason to go abuse the system. That doesn't give you reason to go and do this. Now, I played in New York City. I played in Manhattan. It was crazy, dude. I mean, it was, it was. nuts, right? You were there. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. I've also been in a small town where there's not a lot of things and you have to get creative and you have to use your resources. And if you have a restaurant, you have to go in there and ask something about your restaurant. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. N nothing is going to be like New York city, except New York city. New York city was ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. and there was no abuse. It was just, there's something on every corner and every cell that you can nominate. Yep. And, I'm trying to make Charlotte, North Carolina, Manhattan, because Charlotte's a big enough city to where if you get creative, you can find something to nominate. And that's why I will help anybody across the globe find something in their area. I, I have no hesitation jumping in that Google car and driving it around. So, all right, back to you. Yep. No, 100%. Absolutely. Over. And I'm doing the same thing here, right? Like I'm trying to get as many stops into the game as possible. Um, but you got to do it correctly, right? And you got to... Right. You got to make sure that you're staying within the guidelines. I wanted to talk briefly about the situation that you kind of hinted at earlier. And mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree with the final decision that Niantic made on this. Um, you want so me to bring want... it up on the screen? Yes, bring it up. Okay. Uh, I want to I frame this as kind of a some advice to people and some advice to some some wayfinders out there. So okay. this was rejected. I believe the original rejection was something silly like pedestrian access. And it's like a it looks like a soccer field. So what we're looking at is a picture of a soccer field. Mm -hmm. Um there's a couple of soccer nets in the background. There is a looks like a scoreboard on the other side of the fence line, there's a forest in the background. So it's like a, it's a, it's an athletic, athletic field, soccer yep. field, maybe a football field, um, maybe a rugby field. I think I see the word rugby in the description. So they appealed it and said, Hey, 
pedestrian access for an athletic field is ridiculous. So right. you appeal it <laughs> as you do. <laughs> yep. And interestingly enough, Niantic came back and said, hey, thank you for the appeal, but we're going to hold up this projection because that part, that picture that you've taken is a third party photo. Mm -hmm. So he posted on the forums and was like, uh, Hey Google. And no, it's not. It's, or Hey Wayfire. It's my photo. It, it's my photo. Yeah. It's my, my photo. photo. I uploaded it to Google. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people were just like, hold on. Um, right. This was uploaded to Google. It's his photo. What gives, right? So Niantic Aaron, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, they they reviewed it. Um, they are standing by their rejection. Um, mm -hmm. So and this is a tough yeah, I, one, right? This is a tough one for me because on the Wayfair Discussion Discord, there was a lot of we're looking into specific terms of service and who owns the metadata and you know, who mm -hmm. owns the photo. And in this specific situation, this submitter submitted, took the photo and submitted the nomination in May of 2023. And I believe it was in July, the photo was uploaded to Google. Right. So Google took the photo and did whatever they did with it. So when Nianta did their investigation, they said, this is a third party photo you got this photo from Google and mm -hmm. the submitter is like, hold on dog. I submitted that photo to Google. That's the only way they got it was from my camera roll. Right. So, uh, Niantic at the base level is correct. This photo is from Google, but what they're not realizing is the submitter, if the submitter never uploaded to Google, it never would have been marked a third party photo. So I think this is a situation where we, them, Am ambassadors need to help Niantic understand what's in this situation that they might see it as a third party photo, but the submitter sent the, the photo to Google that made it a third party photo. I, I feel like I'm talking in a circle. Does that make sense? No, it does. You? Right. And I think it's, it's a slippery slope. Right. And I think that my, my way of looking at this is I think and I don't know if you can tell when a photo was uploaded to Google mm -hmm. or not. Because if you can't, then how is Niantic to know if you were really the person who uploaded it to Google, right? Like, I understand the usernames sure. are, are similar. Um, yeah. Or, or the same. But it opens up a door for people to abuse the system. Mm -hmm. Right, just claiming, oh, it's not a third-party photo. That's my picture. I own it. Right. Um, I've heard, I've seen people on the forums and in the Discord say, no, no, no. There's a hundred percent. You can tell when it was uploaded to Google, and I don't know that for sure, but I, I tend to believe them. Right. It, That's where I got those dates. Was yeah. the people who said they could right. tell that that one was in May and one was in July. To me, and this is where I think that Nyanta kind of failed in this situation is the nomination came before the Google photo. Right. Correct. So how did they take the Google photo and use it in the nomination if it came after? Right. You know what I mean? But so yep. on the same boat, like if it was if the Google photo was before, I don't care if it's yours. Don't use it. Right. Take yeah. a new one. Right. Yep. yep. Right. So my message to people is to be very, very careful what you do with the photos that you use for your nomination. Like if you're gonna nominate something, take an original photo, use that for your nomination. And if you want to upload photos to, because I've, I've uploaded photos to Google for the parks here, right? So that they appear on, on the Google maps mm -hmm. and stuff. But I always take them from a different angle, right? Gotcha. Change your angle a little bit, change the lighting a little bit so that it's not exactly the same picture. Because I was always worried about this happening. But the Google photo going up before my photo went up. Right. And then it getting flagged as a third party. Right. So well, remember, we we made the suggestion to Tib in New York that wouldn't it be great if when you nominate when you uploaded your photo to Wayfair that it timestamped it? Remember when I asked yes. you that? Yes. Yes. That you know, that way 
God forbid, you know, you nominate something in October and it doesn't get voted on until March and someone tries to say it's seasonal, they can understand what they're looking at. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I think that could potentially have helped in this situation if that had a May 2023 timestamp on it. And, yeah. and Niantic is looking at the Google photo and, and it's got a July timestamp. They can obviously see it predates Google photo. Don't yeah. know if that would have helped in their situation, but I think time stamping photos can help for a lot of different reasons. Uh, it gives a little bit more of information to the voter on what the submitter was thinking, doing at that time. But I think yeah. to your point, if the photo had predated the nomination, it's a slam dunk. It's a third party photo, regardless if mm-hmm. it's your photo or not. But in this yep. situation, I would, um, I would go against Niantic's decision and I would side on the side of the submitter that it was actually their photo that is now being considered a photo. Yeah. Yeah. And Niantic Aaron said um, shortly before we went live uh, that they reviewed it with the team and they uh, made the decision to stand by their rejection. Um, he wanted to reiterate that there was no punishments awarded because of the nomination. It's just rejected. So he can go right. or they can go and just resubmit it. And right, get it take, a, again with a take a different picture, right? Take three steps to the left and take the picture yeah. again, and it's not a third party photo, right? I will say this um, they kind of were very, very condescending and very insulting to the Wayfair team, and they got a, a warning for the Wayfair forum. Uh, mm-hmm. so like this is one of those cases that may, maybe don't be a bad person to the Wayfair right. team when you're asking them yep. to, to help you. Um, not saying that because they called them brain dead is the reason that they decided to stick with their rejection reason. Right. Um, yep. I think they probably would have done that anyway. Just be a just be but a good human in all situations. Be a good human. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, don't go on the Wayfair forums and start insulting people, or don't go on Twitter right. and insult and start start insulting people. Right. I think that was lost on Twitter like 10 years ago. I think Twitter uh, was born yeah. for people to go on there and insult. So <laughs> I think you might be yeah. you might be pushing that ball. What's the the Greek guy that is pushing the ball uphill and oh. keeps rolling back down on him? I know who you're talking about, but I don't yes. remember his name. It's going to come to me as soon as we hit stop. It's going to come to me. Yes. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, one last thing before we go to break, because it has been an hour and 20 minutes, and we're already going very, very long. Um, but I think we needed to do this. Um, yeah, we needed for to sure. kind of clear the air for a lot of things and kind of throw our support behind this whole process, because I think it's a good process. And I think that mm-hmm. the Wayfair system needs all of this. Um, but I wanted to kind of shout out the ambassadors because they had a big part in creating this and mm-hmm. they are champions for Wayfair. They are a group of people who are dedicated and love Wayfair as much or more than we do. And right. they dedicate a lot of their free time to ensuring that Wayfair runs correctly. And they're not afraid to kind of go at Niantic and use their 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 channels and their avenues with Niantic to say, hey, you think you messed up here right right and i'm sure a lot of times that the wayfair team has been like yeah hey like these clarifications i bet you that was the ambassadors going hey you know poke 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 you guys need to right clarify some things and here. and, and oh. there was one ambassador that you and i had a question with that said if we only knew all the things that they poked niantic about that didn't get done and i'm yeah. like oh interesting you know i mean yeah. i i think that's one thing that that Obviously, the ambassadors aren't going to come out and say, I tried to get this done and Niantic said no. Obviously, right. you know, there's an NDA involved and things like that. But yep. I know, I'm confident that they are they are ambassadors for not only the Wayfinders, Niantic, but the Wayfair system in general. Yep, 100%, right? And they do a very, very good job. They do a fantastic job of being representative for the Wayfair community. And so we wanted to kind of shout them out and make sure that everyone is being kind to the ambassadors, because I think some of the ambassadors on Twitter, uh, and us for sure, caught a lot of flack in the last couple yep. of days for kind of defending the work that they had done. And it was very unfair. It's, it's there's very passionate people and yep. they were, Andis was, was on there and he, that thread from Andis 
and again, was, was shared in the description. It was fantastic. It'll be in the description. It, it was great. It was. It was a fan. It was a if I can share one thing, read. Chris. If yeah. I can share one thing, so. Um, sea princess reached out to us one of the wayfair ambassadors and someone who i've met in person a couple different times sea Princess, awesome um she wanted to clarify some things that were going around on social media also since we're kind of talking about that right now mm -hmm. um the things that she wanted to make sure that were clarified and i told her that we'd say this routes have nothing to do with this zero yeah right? submissions being rejected by ai nothing to do with this um I think people who are not connected to Wayfair and are seeing complaints of AI rejections that happen quickly and confusing it for account suspensions because they don't know any of the details. And then mm -hmm. third and finally, no account suspensions are being handled through AI. All of them are being individually investigated by personnel. So um, C Princess, thank you for that. There was a lot of things going around the last couple of days on social media that were just factually untrue. So mm -hmm. she wanted us to clear that up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's very, very well said. Um, so we're going to roll the break. Uh, speaking of the ambassadors, Waste Spot of the Week and both Coals of the Week come from ambassadors this week. Yeah. So we're going to highlight some of the good work that they've been doing. Uh, we're going to play some dad jokes, lighten the mood a little bit after uh, yes. a very heavy hour and a half. We appreciate yeah. you. And the dad with jokes us. have a theme this week. Ooh, theme. what's the theme this week? Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, quack. Love it. All right, we yeah. will see you on the other side. Why don't ducks like reading directions? They'd rather wing it. What's a duck's favorite ballet? Nut quacka. What time do ducks get up? The quack of dawn. What do ducks like to put in their soup? Quackas, of course. What do you call a duck that breaks into people's houses? A robber ducky. What kind of movies and TV shows do ducks like to watch? Duckumentaries. What did the duck say when he dropped his plate? Hmm, hope I didn't quack it. What do you call a clever duck? A wise qu What kind of eggs do bad ducks lay? Deviled eggs. Where do tough ducks come from? Hard boiled eggs. Why did the duck get a second job? He had too many bills. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the dad jokes. A little bit of levity quack, quack. into this episode. Quack, quack, quack. We're going to jump right into Way Spot of the Week. So Way Spot of the Week this week comes to us from Kawin240 in the Wayfair Discussion Discord. Kawin is one of the Wayfair ambassadors. And... This is one of the, the the coolest statues that I've seen in a very long time. Um, it that is, thing is hot. That's nice. Yeah, it is cool. It yeah. is a picture of so it's a it's a sculpture of a man standing next to a lake. One foot is on the shore, and the other foot appears to be like on a rock that's a little bit in the water. And he's holding on to what looks like a fishing net. And the fishing net actually extends yeah. out into the water. Yeah. And in the background, you can see so the, cool. the other side of the shore. You can see a couple of sailboats in, in the yeah. background. It, is, it just looks super, super cool. And I, I was scrolling through looking for um, ambassador submissions. And I came across this. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Um, that is it's, so cool. Yeah. It is, its title is Rivar. I probably butchered that. Um, I'm not even, it's a very, very long description. And it, the first part of it translates to a large part of the population of Milni lived from fishing. There's almost no family in Milni that is not connected to fishing in some way. So this is a dedication to all of the fishers who have lived in this, in this town. And it's just, it's fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's so cool for someone to have thought of this because I'm sure the ancestors in this town probably stood on that rock and on the shore and mm -hmm. held that rope just like that. And like, yeah. that could be somebody's like great, great grandfather or something. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's really sweet. I like it. I like that. That's, that's probably exactly it. Like, that's probably somewhere you're right. That's that people have fished in that spot before doing exactly that. Right. So it's like the yeah. perfect tribute. Yeah. It's just 100%. Love it. 
Yes. So thank you for posting this. Um, it's yeah, it's amazing. Now, now things that do are we want to talk about? Yeah, do we talk about the opposite of what we want? Is that what we want to do now? Let's talk about things that are amazing for a not a good way. I've been working on the way there all the live long day. I've been working on the way there just to pass the. Uh oh. Oh no. Hey Jamal, I found some coal. Alright, so coal of the week number one. And this one comes to us from Ambassador Pokemon J in the Wayfarer Discussion Discord. But being completely honest, Ambassador uh, Pokemon Trainer J is probably in our Pokemon Professor Network more than any other ambassador. So, Jay, mm -hmm. thank you for always being available to our people, answering questions. And he's always dropping little nuggets in there or things that we yep. should know. I love it. Like, um, another reason to join the Pokemon Professor Network, and Chris will tell you about it later, but, like, we've got ambassadors that are in there all the time. But yeah. on to Jay's Cole. So, what you were looking at here, it says Scout Hut. And I'm going to try to send this to you here. Uh, Chris, what you're looking at is, it's a door that looks like it's connected to a building or potentially a shed. The title is Scout Hut, and the description is, Scouts Met Here. Might do, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Scouts met here. Might still do. I don't know. <laughs> and the supporting picture is kind of a woodsy type of area. I believe the point of interest that they nominated is left behind a tree, but it looks more like a trail. And it said it leads people into the beautiful church woods and is a couple of routes, in quotes, awaiting approval on a public <laughs> footpath away from roads. Well, well, hold on. We just, like, cross-pollinated, like, three different games. Anyhow. Yeah. This is cool. I love yeah. getting things from the UK. I used to have my bonus location in the UK. But, you know... If this was a scout hut on, on its face, it would probably be K through 12 because most Boy Scouts are young. This could be cool for different reasons, but uh, Trainer J, thank you for sending this over. We appreciate it. This is cool. Might still do. I don't know. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> you want to uh, you wanna take uh, coal of the week number two, Chris? Yeah. Give me well. Oh, apparently, I closed it, so just give me one second to open it up All right. here. I could say this about that one. I'll explain. Okay, explain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. All right. So, all right, here we go. Cola Lake number two comes from Ambassador and friend of the show, Sea Princess, in the Wayfarer discussion Discord. Uh, this is again another door. So we are door heavy this week. It is, <laughs> it's like a pink door on a pink building. You can see on the left hand side, you can see like part of the building is now yellow, and it looks like that's someone's porch, maybe or balcony. Uh, the title maybe. is yeah, yeah, Americana Building Number Five Side Entrance. So it's not even the front entrance; it's the side entrance. Um, <laughs> building Number Five is one of the twenty-two buildings in the Americana Apartments. Built in 1969, this building has become home to many residents over the years. So, <sighs> apartment buildings generally on their face are not eligible. Correct. Uh, side entrances to apartment buildings are definitely not eligible. Right. It's, it's just like a metal door. It is. It's just a metal There's door. There's nothing interesting about this. No. Not even the number five sign is interesting. Right. And it's, the supporting information is trainers can explore the many trails leading through this and around the Americana apartments. So, so maybe there's some some thing cool, neat things on those trails that you can nominate. Not I like how you tied the two coals together. They both talk about trails. I like both, that. Yeah. And their doors. Look at and that. Their doors. You just kind of did that. Yep. 
So this is definitely uh, coal. Coal. Sorry. Oh, all right. So that is, I think, I think that's a show. I, I do. I think, I think that's a show. I think we're done. Uh, hour quick reminder. And 45 minutes. Hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. One of, uh, it might be the longest episode that this podcast has ever had. Yeah. Yeah. It's up there. Right. Um, quick reminder, going back to the beginning of the show, go to the Wayfarer forums, vote for the next Wayfarer challenge. We will be covering yes. it in depth once the country is chosen. So stay tuned to the way spotters for that. Stay tuned to our Twitter, all of our socials. Uh, do you got anything before we go? Bring us home, man. Bring us home. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Waste Spotters. We really appreciate it. A big thank you to our executive producer, Kate the Cons, and to all of our patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Waste Spotters, there's a few ways you can show us. Follow us on all of our socials. We are on Twitter at Waste Spotters. We are also on Instagram at Waste Spotters Podcast and on TikTok at I Make Waste Spots. We are incredibly responsive and love interacting with our followers. Let us know what you thought about today's episode and uh, let us know what you think about all of our episodes. You can also visit our website at www.wastespotters.com. From there, you can get the links to everywhere you can download the show. You can also send us a message directly from the website. We love hearing from our followers. Uh, or you can email us, wastespotters at pokemonprofessor.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified whenever we go live, we post a new video. For those of you who are not, be sure to check us out. We post shorts for the dad jokes, waste spot of the week, cold of the week, and more. We are at youtube.com slash at wastespotters podcast. You can leave us a voicemail on our hotline, 704-426-3710, or tweet us a voice message. You never know when... You never know, your voicemail may appear on an upcoming episode of the show. We have some in queue. We just didn't want to do it today because we were already going long. Uh, finally, if you're not a member of the Pokemon Professor Network Patreon, you can join us for as little as $1 US a month. And we have a fun graphic that is <laughs> a $1.35 Canadian, $7.82 in Hong Kong dollars, a dollar fifty-five in Australian, eighty-two pence in England, seventeen twenty-one in Mexican pesos, and I wrote this down because I wasn't going to remember it. It's ten kroner and seventy-six ur in Norway. Ooh. All you need to do is go to Patreon.com/slash Pokemon Professor. You will have access to the Discord for the entire family of shows across the Pokemon Professor Network including Waste Spotters, Special Conditions, Gotta Watch Them All, Purified Podcast, and Lured Up. And it's a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. Jamal and I are in the, active in the Discord a lot, so come and hang out. We would love to have you. Come and hang out with us. We, with that, we look forward to you joining us again next week here on Waste Spotters. We appreciate all of the support that we get every week. We couldn't do this without you all. And remember, it's not that far. Get out of your car. Thanks, everybody.